had made it through my first year living alone in the wilderness. My little cabin had kept me warm and comfortable. With the arrival of spring, it felt good to get back to work again. I must restock the lumber yard, for I had cash building on my mind, something I had thought about all winter long. I think it will be the answer to keeping those critters out of my food supply. Folks say that axemanship is a lost art, but I like to think I've found it again in these cool spruce woods. The pull of the packboard straps felt comfortable against my woolen shirt, and I could feel the warmth of the spring sun on my face. It was real bull work, but I never felt any better. I wondered if there was anyone in the world as free and happy as I was. I would spend the rest of the afternoon ripping boards from my well-seasoned logs. I would need seven or eight to provide me with a solid and level foundation for the cash building. With six boards ripped, it was time to take a break. I would see if I could catch a fish for supper. In the last few days, Hope Creek has eaten a big opening into the lake ice. I could see the pool of open water growing before my eyes. A pair of harlequin ducks swam out from shore as I passed by and began talking to me. I worked a metal spoon deep into the current, jerked it toward me, and let it drift back. Not a strike after several casts, then a snag, then it moved. I knew I had a fish, a 15-inch grayling, enough for my needs. A few sticks of wood on the coals and I would be back in business again. The little stove that Brother Jake built is good company and works well. The proof of a good stove is in the heating, and this one is amazing. Very little fire, but it keeps my water boiling in the kettle. For my supper tonight, it would be fried trout and a batch of biscuits, made from the sourdough starter that Mary Allsworth had given me last spring. It's hard to believe it's been one year ago today that Babe brought me here to Twin Lakes in the little tea craft. I remember it was a beautiful day, and we had sat and talked on the gravel bar at the upper end of the lower lake. I had backpacked two loads that day to Spike's cabin, and I had even picked up a sunburn from the sun on the snow. It was the first day of what I believe has been the most interesting year of my life. While waiting for my biscuits to raise, I will catch up on my journals and a few overdue letters to send back home. Tomorrow just might be a good day to prepare for the cash building. I had many poles to cut and peel today before the cache construction begins. I had cut many of them last November on the far side of Hope Creek. They had been seasoning all this time. I had cut four other heavier logs about 15 feet long. These would be my stilts to hold the cache aloft. I finished the post holes and set in the big stilts. Like the fireplace and cabin, I can see the cache up on the poles already.
The first course of logs was notched and nailed to my foundation planks. I cut notches for four stringers and hewed the stringers to fit. The logs fit snugly into their custom-made notches. 30 in place. The cache is now 29 inches high. Now for some roof poles. Everything has a good snug fit down here on the ground. I hope it goes together with no trouble when I climb the ladder with all the pieces. It's May 18th. Strange to wake up before 3 in the morning and feel that daylight is being wasted. This is Red Runt's country, and I am the invader, and hardly a day passes that he does not remind me of this with his chatter. It's good to see bears on the mountain again. I spotted a big blonde bear, and then another chocolate color, and another until there were three standing half as tall as their mother. Cubs, but not this year's. I studied them through the 60 power eyepiece and finally talked myself out of climbing up there to see them at close range. I had a cache to build. I went to the woodshed and ripped out planks for the door frame and some inch and a half planks for the door. I then cut two sets of hinges out of a stump of wood. I was ready to take my little house apart and put it back together again on top of its nine-foot stilts. I used my meat pole ladder for a scaffold. Soon, number one log was resting atop the stilts. The logs fit perfectly. Forty-penny spikes went into the heavy ends and sixteen pennies into the small ends. Next, the door. All that remained was to cut the logs in between, and I had an opening for the door. I finished off the roof with tar paper and a good layer of moss. I am really proud of that piece of work. For all practical purposes, my miniature cabin on stilts was complete. Today, I had better check the lake ice, for I've been expecting Babe in with supplies any day now, and I would hate to see him sink out of sight. He once said to me, when the ice is safe for landing, put the oil drum out on the ice. So I did. Ten weeks later, he came in and asked, why the oil drum on the ice? He has a good memory, but it isn't very long. The ice was still 32 inches thick. So I formed a huge OK, so Babe could easily see it from the air. Today, I would take a hike up country. My pack made up and lashed on the GI pack frame. Along with the Bolex and heavy tripod, I packed 500 feet of film, some smoked fish, and the big pistol. Around 40 pounds, I would guess. I was away by 7.30. To order a copy of this program, please call this toll-free number or visit our website at www.aloneinthewilderness.com.